So in fact, in March 2017, we identified 52 substantial action items. And today, I'm proud to tell you that 38 of those action items in the roadmap have been completed, eight are active, and three have been discontinued. These were dramatic structural changes to our growth-related efforts, which resulted in the entire St. John economic development landscape working together towards predefined goals. Here are some of the key results. A new strategic real estate organization called Develop St. John. I'll talk about that uh, more in a minute. A report and recommendation to the New Brunswick government and opposition of a new delivery model for fair taxation. If implemented in, in full, all taxpayers would pay less tax and the city would be on a renewed path to prosperity. Creation of a population growth strategy, a first for the city. For the first time in 60 years, the uptown has led the Greater St. John region in population growth with a rate of more than 15% over the last census period. $245,000 investment in development incentives has resulted in $2.5 million in construction activity and 37 new units being constructed. Annual construction value in the city was $207 million in 2017, a record-breaking year for the city. Non-residential construction was valued at $47.3 million compared to $25 million in 2016. 133 new housing units are under construction, the highest level since 2014. The Enhanced Vacant and Dangerous Building Program closed 80 cases, including 41 de demolitions and 39 repairs. We're cleaning our city up. We are in the final stages of a public engagement our, on our Central Peninsula neighborhood plan. I always say, I'm sorry Jacqueline, I always say Central Peninsula Action Plan, which is a long-term plan uh, for this area with short, medium, and long-term actions. And we're, through the, we're going through the public engagement, uh, final public engagement process now. Over the last three years, our community has welcomed approximately a half a billion dollars in federal and provincial infrastructure funding to support strategic projects, including the Safe Clean Drinking Water Project, the West Side Port Expansion, the new Seaside Park Elementary School, the Barge Terminal, the NBCC Facility Expansion, the Fieldhouse, the City Market Upgrades, Transit Funding, our St. John Airport, St. John High School upgrades recently announced, and more. Enterprise St. John is focused on employment growth with 568 new and sustained jobs. St. John's CMA employment was up by 1,900 people in 2017 versus 2016. So, as you heard last year, and nothing has changed, we must grow. Our growth efforts are new, bold, and have a real focus on alignment amongst our agencies, which is key, which, is, which, which achieves efficiency and focus on outcomes. We've done some heavy lifting for continued prosperity of our city. We have a growth focus, a wonderful education ecosystem, a diverse economy with global leaders, and world-class small and medium-sized enterprises, a wonderful people, generosity, and a drive to grow this city. We have a plan for growing our population, which is critically important. The population growth framework includes a focus on attracting new people to St. John, enhancing the newcomer experience, I hope this is part of that today, and the retention of our young people. This document is a wonderful collaboration amongst local agencies such as the YMCA um, Newcomers, St. John Newcomers, formerly Multicultural Newcomers Resource Center, Prude Inc., Human Development Council, and many more. Recruitment missions to attract new people in St. John um, are part of our plan and keeping our young people to fill the jobs um, that we need uh, is also critically important. It's also critically important that we do a better job of aligning and matching those looking for jobs and those that are on a daily basis talking about needing the skills. Attracting new residents to St. John, we've set very aggressive targets. The city of St. John has been on a decline of population since the 60s. Uh, we were, you know, in the range, I think, of, help me, 90,000 people, I think, at the height. Uh, we were going to grow to 250,000 people. And in, you know, 2016, we learned that we were at uh, 67,540. And when we've just implemented for the first time the pop a population growth strategy to turn this around. We've put a population growth manager in place. But this is probably one of the areas, frankly, that, that we need to invest in the most. And it's one of my concerns. It's one of the areas we invest in the least, the economic development side of our business. So we've set some very aggressive targets. Uh, David Dobelstein, who's our population growth manager, who uh, puts a seatbelt seat belt on every, no pressure, David. 
That's, is there a spotlight? We can shine it down a different... But it's not, I mean, all kidding aside, folks, it's not a single person's job. It's a whole community's job. It's a whole region's job. But we've set some incredibly aggressive targets for permanent residents here uh, over the next number of years. And the only way we're going to get there to David, to our city staff, to council, to the rest of the community is to be incredibly aligned, incredibly focused, be excellent at execution, but also muster up more dollars to help us get there. We also participated in Infrastructure Canada Smart City Challenge. So while we did not advance, and I'd like to congratulate our colleagues in Fredericton who did advance uh, to the next round, uh, we learned a lot. I'd like to thank Ernst & Young, Enterprise St. John, all of the city teams who worked, and all of the volunteers who worked uh, day and night to put that application together. But we were left with the consolation prize, some very, very innovative approaches to moving forward. So, and there's some good news. Um, point, point, very small good news. Uh, so early news from Stats Can tells us that we've, we've stopped the shrinking, that we've, we've stabilized. And I think before you can grow, you have to stabilize.